Hello, I'm Dr. Gloria Horsley, and I'm her daughter, Dr. Heidi Horsley. Heidi and I want to welcome you to Open to Hope Conversations, the podcast. We believe that the greatest gift you can give yourself after a loss is hope, using this moment to connect with others who have not only survived, but thrived. So let's get started. Welcome to the Open to Hope Show. I'm your host, Dr. Gloria Horsley, with my daughter and co-host, Dr. Heidi Horsley. Well, Heidi, we've had a few psychics on the show, and so today we are going to have not a counter, but a thought about psychics. And the name of our show today is Psychics, Do They Help or Hinder Bereaved People? And we've got a person who's done some studies and given a lot of thought about that, and who is also a great friend of ours. you want to introduce him, Heidi? Yes, so we've got Dr. Bob Bauer here today. He is a psychologist who teaches courses at Highline College near Seattle. Uh, he teaches a very popular course. It's called Critical Thinking About the Paranormal. And he's written several books and more than 100 articles on coping with grief. And he is a sought after workshop presenter at the Compassionate Friends and a dear friend of ours. Welcome to the show, Dr. Bob. Hi, thank you. Here I am. I'm hanging out in Seattle here where I live. So good to see you guys. Great to have you on. Well, let's get right to it. Let's start out with Bob. Why do people go to psychics? Well, I think we all know the answer to that. When someone dies, um, you know, we're left with such grief and such pain, and we want to find some answers. We want to know that our loved ones are okay. We want some message. We want, you know, to have some degree of comfort. So we get a lot of people um, who have those ideas that hmm, maybe I can contact the other side. And on one hand, some people feel like they're doing it themselves. You know, they're popular workshops on signs um, that <clears throat> people go to. And, you know, who are any of us to say that those signs aren't, aren't real? But for some people, they decide, hmm, maybe I'll go to a medium. Maybe I'll go to someone who is sort of in the middle of the other world and where we are. And sometimes people do that. Mm -hmm. And, I, you know, I've heard people talk about it. Um, a couple of things I've heard of, they want to know if um, they're all right. Yeah, I think that's a big one. If they were at peace when they died. When you go to a medium, that's what you always hear, is that, you know, th uh, things are fine, which, you know, I understand that that's a great deal of comfort. I think there was some research, I think you said that about 50% of people feel that they've had some sign or connection or... Something like that. Yeah, so a it, lot of they did that research on on widowed people and found that um, about half of all them at some point, usually within the first year, feel that they've had some sort of contact, whether it's there he was standing at the foot of my bed, or I thought I saw him in the kitchen, or I heard his voice, or I felt him next to me, or whatever. And you know, we don't send people who experience those things to psychiatrists. You know, we we say, hey, look, um, if that's what you experience, that's your experience. Mm -hmm. And I think that there are a lot of people who have things that they don't even talk about too. Uh, sure, sure, you know, scary. Like, oh, I don't want to mention this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think yeah. I'm, yeah. So, so Bob, what I'm hearing is that that you know, if people have signs, that's their own. You know, that's their reality. But what I'm hearing is you say you've got to be weary about paying somebody that claims to be a medium. And at a very vulnerable time, because I, I often know that when people are grieving, and I mean, I was grieving my brother's loss, they, they I hear, especially grieved parents for some reason, I hear them saying that they want to go to a medium and, and have them connect them with their deceased child. You did a show recently where you had a person who claimed they were a psychic, claimed that they were a medium. So I went to this person's website and I thought, hmm, I wonder what if I click on there? Um, <coughs> I wonder how much it would cost to have you know, a phone call with this person. And I looked at it, it was like $350. Wow. And so I remember talking to my daughter about this and she, she came up, she's a writer. So she came up with this great, you know, comment. She said, how wide must you open your wallet when you're open to hope? Uh, yeah. yeah. And so people, so people are, are really, desperate, right? People are yeah, desperate. They, so they are, desperate. they are, they want that. They want that comfort and you know I have no problem with that but like um, Gloria mentioned at the beginning once a year I teach a class called 
critical thinking about the paranormal. I pose as a psychic and both Phil and I have a hit because I ask my students a number of questions. Um, you know, uh, how accurate was I? Um, you know, what comments do you have? How much do you believe in this? And so on. And what I have is about an 80% accuracy rate, okay? Where we point to someone and say, you know, what's going on? You got a kid who has his baseball cap on, he's probably 18, 19 years old, right? And I point to him and say, I see some lights behind you. Have, have you had a ticket recently? Yeah, man, how'd you know, right? Okay, so what I do is I put together a list of techniques that people have used in the past that seem real, right? When that finger comes pointing at you, who's John, you know? Um, then it's like, wow, that really means something. So that's my job. Let me ask you, are there any positive outcomes that you've seen for people going to psychics? Sure, I, I think initially uh, <clears throat> many people have positive outcomes and feel like they've got the other side, they're comforted and so on. And I have no problem with that, but Again, my job is to say, go into it as a good critical thinker. Don't just, you know, blindly go into it. Some people call ahead of time, they give a lot of information. Then when they show up, you know, the person already knows that information. The person forgot they told them this much information on the phone. And now this person's feeding back all this information and the person goes, wow, I can't believe they knew this much. Well, you know, one, you already told them. So I always tell, you know, anyone who wants to go, take a voice recorder. This person whose website I've, I visited recently says, you are not to record this, either audio or video. That's wrong. Because what you wanna do is you wanna go back through and look at it because what gives people comfort is when they have that hit, when it looks like they've said something, you know, um, you're keeping this jewelry, uh, you have some jewelry of this person and um, you know, uh, you have it close to you. Oh my goodness, yes, I'm wearing the earrings or the necklace or whatever, you know, how did he know that? Well, guess what? A lot of people know those kinds of things. So it's, or they say things like, you know, there's something about fire. I don't know about fire. What's going on with fire? You go, wow, you're getting on two of my things, Bob. This really? My, my wedding ring is my grandmother's. Yeah. And my brother died in a fire. Wow. <laughs> so yeah. I, this could See? speak to me if I if I believed in it, right? Yeah. I mean, I yeah. Oh it. man, when that finger comes pointing at you, it's amazing. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So for Gloria, yes, there's some degree of comfort, but but you know the whole point is, do you want comfort that may not be true, or do you want you know, do you want real comfort? We're waiting for the one psychic to tell us who murdered a loved one, right? Mm -hmm. Right. You know, if you really are contacting this person, then who murdered you, right? Most people who are murdered each year are murdered by someone they know, okay? Mm -hmm. So why don't we have, you know, hasn't happened yet, right? I'm also, I was also waiting for some psychic to tell us ahead of time about the corona virus. Mm -hmm. That'd be nice. Millions of people consider themselves psychics throughout the world. Not one person came and said, get ready, here it comes. Mm -hmm. no. mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. so well, that's our job. Well, the other thing for me, which has been a problem is I had a client that was going to a psychic and the psychic kept saying, I'm getting messages that you need to come every single week. Wow. And it was that's really scary. expensive. It was, it was yes. way more than I charge. And so this okay. person was going to Midtown every week and spending hundreds and hundreds wow. of dollars on this psychic. And, wow. you know, she, she was grieving and, and not making, you know, she was very vulnerable at that point. And so, you know, I was concerned because she kept putting all this money out to the psychic. Oh, see, that's sad, very sad and repeated a lot, unfortunately. Even if it's not true, Bob, why does it matter if I only go a couple of times or once or hang out. Yeah. yeah, I was on I was on television with a famous psychic um, many years ago and the host um, asked me that question, you know, so what's the harm? Because what happens is initially for a lot of people, um, they have this feeling of, of glow and um, uh, this contact and so on. But when they, when they begin to think back on, you know, they said a lot of things that really don't work, you know, they kept saying, you know, what, a, what about that tree that, that, that fell, you know, there's a, a tree that fell and you go tree, I, I have no idea. And you start to go back and, and see that this so-called psychic missed a lot of things that, that don't work. So, you know, on one hand, yes, it may give some people comfort, but what about later on when they start to see that, 
you know, there's some tricks that psychics use. And, you know, this person got a lot of things wrong that don't make any sense. And so, yes, I, I think in the long run, you know, is truth, is truth harmful? I don't think so. I think for all of us, we really want to know the truth. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And if you think about it, to contact the dead is the most amazing finding in the history of the world, right? Mm -hmm. If that were really true, there's no finding that is more incredible than this. And so, you know, where are these people? And, you know, why do they charge so much money? And why are they, um, you know, latching on to the most vulnerable group? That's my concern. I, I love I love it. And I think it's so important uh, what you're saying. And tell us how people can get your article. And also, I want you to know Bob Bauer. If you uh, are in the grief and loss world or if you've had a loss, you need to look him up and tell him where to find you because you've got all those books and everything you've written. And oh, good. Yeah. Written. Yeah. I just opened a new website. Um, okay. So it's very simple. Uh, www.bobbauer.com. So great to talk to you today. Good, you too. Dr. Bob, thank you for being a bright light. You're awesome. Good. You're welcome. Thanks, Heidi. And thanks everybody for joining us on this show today. And Heidi and I and Bob want to remind you all that if you've lost hope, please lean on ours until you find your own and God bless. I'm Dr. Heidi Horsley. You have been listening to Open to Hope, the podcast. You can follow Open to Hope on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. To learn more, visit us at opentohope.com and go to Apple Podcasts to subscribe. I'm Dr. Gloria Horsley. Join us again next week for another Open to Hope conversation, where we invite you to lean on our hope until you find your own.